All right, it's that time of the day again, ladies and gentlemen. It's Chelsea News Blitz. Lots and lots to talk about, as always. All right, all right, all right. Here we go back again on the other side of the coin. All right, welcome back to the other side of the coin, ladies and gentlemen. Let's get straight into this. First up, Liverpool are stepping up their interest in signing 22-year-old Monaco midfielder Aurelien Chiamini. Contracts have been established between Liverpool and the Frenchman's uh, entourage, and the player is interested in a move to Anfield. Look, I'm not quite certain about this, and I'll tell you what, this particular comment here has really got my eyes, and I really... Um, I tend to think, I tend to agree with this. They won't sign overhyped, overrated players on big wages. That's something Chelsea pride ourselves on doing. Most fans knew Lukaku is a counter attacking forward, yet we went him, uh, we, we want him to play in a possession based counter pressing system. Makes sense. Rice should be the next 100 million flop. I mean, look, this is the thing. Liverpool don't operate like this. Liverpool don't go out there and get the most glitziest, glamorous um, you know, player out there. They do their scouting properly. You look at their midfield, they've got Fabinho, Nabi Keita, Thiago Alcantara, Jordan Henderson. Um, I think they've got a few more other players as well. I don't know they go, if they go out there and actually buy someone like Aurelien Schermany, who's going to command a lot of money in terms of transfer fee. Don't think he's going to come cheap. He was cheap last season. This season ain't going to be cheap. As much as I would like Chelsea to, to make a statement signing, this would be it for me. Because for me, he fits the whole ideology of how we want to play from the back. I mean, so far, what we've seen with Thomas Tuchel, he's very good on the ball. His passing range is excellent, whether it's short, whether it's long. He's combative as well. And he can, at times, bomb forward and chip in with goals too. So look, he's the kind of that creative mind that you want from that from the back. And he has that mobility and physicality as well. So look, once again, I personally feel he's a better fit than Declan Rice in, in Chelsea Football Club, but it ain't going to come easy. It is not going to come, I mean, it's not going to come cheap. Forget about easy, it ain't going to come cheap. So from that perspective, I don't think this is a Liverpool um, target at all. If we have the chance, let's do it. If that's going to be our statement signing, let's do that. But as I've said in recent times, ladies and gentlemen, I want our scouts to find gems. I want our scouts to find good players for reasonable price because we are going to have to spend money in many different areas. And I don't know what the new owners um, are going to outlay as soon as they come in. Understand the three bidders for Chelsea have all been invited to make final pitches at Stamford Bridge this week ahead of the club choosing a preferred buyer. This is coming from Matt Law. I hope, I truly hope by this week it's all done and dusted because we are falling behind. Every other club out there are already starting to talk to different players, their agents and so on and so forth. We have a lot of work to do in this upcoming summer with different players that we need in defence in fullback area, midfield, up front, players that need to go. This setback is a huge setback with this whole ownership situation. We need this to be rectified. All the bidders, all of the bidders are in the dark over when a preferred buyer will be named, but there remains hope that a decision from Chelsea and Rain, the bank in charge of the sale, could be communicated by the end of the week. Next up, we have it is understood that Rain have been careful to give each of the three bidders equal time and opportunities of who they meet with their final pitches to avoid any acquisition of favoritism. I mean, I think in recent times we've seen Stephen Paluka as well and his consortium being able to meet up with Paul Cannavale and a few of the other um, Chelsea representatives. Obviously, Top Bowley has, we've noticed him in two Chelsea matches, both of them losses as well. Um, we've heard about the Ricketts. Obviously, Ricketts are now out of it. Um, and Sir Martin Broughton, uh, look, I've not heard enough whether they've met up with anyone, but I'm pretty sure they would have organised something. I think Paul Cannavale has mentioned in his statement yesterday that he's met up with all of them now. Top Bowley's consortium met with Chelsea board on Tuesday, while Stephen Pelika's bid 
team, Palika's bid team and the group followed, uh, fronted by Sir Martin Burton are scheduled to make their presentation on Wednesday. So this is going to happen tomorrow for Stephen Paluka and Sir Martin Burton uh, in regards to making presentations uh, for, for Chelsea. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure they're going to meet the board of directors and whatnot. As I said, Todd Baldy, and it's mentioned he has already met them. All three bids are expecting to be informed by Rain Group, the US merchant bank manager itself of Chelsea, which bid has been chosen on Thursday or Friday. This is from the Athletic. Hopefully by Thursday, Friday. Thursday is our game against Man United. At latest by Friday, please. Let's just announce the winner and let's move on. Um, I, I get it. It is a multi, multi-billion pound situation. It should not be rushed, but... We're in a tough situation. We're in a tough situation. And this has been running for a little while now. It's been running since probably about March, March-ish uh, in this particular in this particular year. So almost two months. I get it. These sort of things take a lot longer than two months. Completely understand. Antonio Rudiger was back in team training at Cobham on Tuesday morning as preparation began ahead of our trip to Manchester United later this week. Look. I don't know how his mindset's going to be. I hope Rudiger gives it his best for the remainder of the season. Whether he plays against Man United, I'm not sure. Does this come a bit too early for him, considering the injury that he's had? I think it was a groin injury. Um, maybe, maybe he sits this one out. But after that, I hope he's completely focused to give it his best. We need him for the FA Cup, and I hope we can send him off with the FA Cup victory. Um, there's a match that's going on at the moment, Real Madrid versus uh, Manchester City versus Real Madrid in the in the Champions League. And um, yeah, some of the defending that Real Madrid was doing is mad. So good luck to Rudiger at Real Madrid. He's, he's going to have his work cut out. The standard sport understands that one of the three bidders to buy Chelsea insisted Antonio Rudiger would have been kept at the club at any cost. One of the three bidders though, one of the three bidders. I think it might have been Todd Bowley. Sales will need to be in the forward line for upcomings with Timo Werner and Ziyech presenting a chance for profit. Um, and further on goes to say Chelsea would like to have, uh, Chelsea likely have to carry on playing a significant portion of Lukaku's wages to facilitate a move. Now, look, uh, in regards to the Rudiger situation, it is what it is. Uh, it's, it's one out of three. So it, it's still a big risk for him if he's stuck around and see what, what's going on. Maybe he doesn't get that offer that he's getting with Real Madrid. And in fact, there were other offers that, that were much bigger than Real Madrid. So look, um, at the end of the day, yes, money is important, but I don't think it's necessarily money because there are other uh, offers that were bigger than Real Madrid. I think I think Man United were looking to provide more money, but he's not going there. Um, in regards to four players, we we do need to go let go of some of them if, because let's let's be honest. The inconsistencies up front, some of the personnels that we have, I don't know if it really, really matches up with what Thomas Tuchel wants to do. 1v1, we lack a lot of penetration. Um, we lack creativity up front as well. Look, as well as Timo Werner has been, overall, I don't know whether he's a perfect fit. So maybe there could be an opportunity to, to sell him for some profit and, and buy someone maybe on a free, like an Osman Dembele, or, or even go out there and, and buy someone like, I don't know, your Rafinhas and whoever else, you know, um, that, that can do a better job than what we have right now for Thomas Tuchel. Ziyech as well, as much as I love Ziyech, Hakim Ziyech is my boy, but, you know, the inconsistency in form, injuries as well, where is his Chelsea career going? I would like to keep him, but there's rumours about Riyad Mahrez. And if I'm being honest, Riyad Mahrez is probably an upgrade as well. So, look... It's interesting, and then lastly, in terms of Lukaku, there's strong rumours that this guy is going to leave. Matt Law has been talking about it. The Athletic has been talking about it. I'm disappointed that he did not make, make a change. Yes, he's in the mud with everything that's happened to him in Chelsea Football Club. We're somewhat sort of liable as well for not getting the best out of him, but I'm just a bit disappointed that Lukaku didn't turn things around. You know, his attitude and his effort on the field is what is letting him down. Um, but let's see till the end of the season what he's capable of doing. But at the moment, apparently, the damage is done and Lukaku is looking to get out as well. And perhaps perhaps it's 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 uh, an amicable um, separation is probably in the cards. 
Mike Dean will referee Manchester United versus Chelsea this Thursday. <sighs> you know what's going to happen, ladies and gentlemen. You know what's going to happen. This guy, this guy, I don't trust him as a referee. I really don't. And he loves, he loves, he loves Man United and he loves Liverpool. Uh, and every time we play against those, those two teams and this guy is on charge, especially against Man United, some weird, weird th things happen. So let's just pray we have a, you know, not a controversial match, please. That's what I'm hoping. Adam Newsom and Tuchel. This is very important, ladies and gentlemen. A conversation will take place once a preferred bidder is chosen, which is hoped will be in the coming days. The new owners, the new owner will have to make sure Tuchel is supported and listened to while working smartly to deliver players suited to his football. Further goes on to say, if that happens, Tuchel won't become frustrated because he enjoys working at Chelsea in a way he didn't at PSG and Dortmund. If it doesn't happen, we will see how strong of a bond Tuchel truly has with Chelsea Football Club. Ladies and gentlemen, this is very, very important. If the new owners come in and they don't back Thomas Tuchel, I won't be surprised if he walks. And the new owners, as I keep saying, they've got their work cut out. Rudiger gone. Christensen gone. Silva only there for another season. Aspie don't know what's going on. Maybe he'll stay for another season. Lee Wakowa, sure, we can bring him in. But Lee Wakowa is not someone that's going to make Thomas Tuchel happy. He will need two quality CBs. Now, that is not going to come cheap. Then we need fullbacks because he ain't going to be happy moving into another season with Marcus Alonso being the backup for Ben Chilwell. Ben Chilwell as well, God knows how he's going to be off the back of that serious injury. Reese James is starting to show some sort of concern in terms of his health, um, you know, getting injured on a regular basis as well. And there's rumours, well, there's talks, not rumours, there's there's proper talks from, from Thomas Tuchel saying that playing as a right wing back is physically demanding of him and then he picks up all these injuries. Aspie cannot be an option, whether it's RCB or right wing back. So fullbacks, two fullbacks, two CBs, midfield. Jorginho possibly, we're probably going to let go of him. Juventus is after him and it's probably the right time. He's only going to have another season to go. It's probably the right time to separate from him. So there's a midfielder that we need. You're going to say Billy Gilmore, but I'm telling you right now, Thomas Tuchel ain't going to want to come, you know, a distant third in the Premier League. He's going to want to challenge against Liverpool and Man City. Um, and then up front, forwards, he's probably going to look to offload some of the forwards that we have, Lukaku being one of them. And then he's going to want some serious, serious ballers up front. So... <sighs> New owners really, really have their work cut out. And if they don't back him, I'm scared that he's going to walk. Speedy recovery to Chelsea youth product Valentina Livermento, who has been diagnosed with an ACL injury. He's going to have surgery and miss eight to nine months of football per Adrian Kajuma. Look, guys, this is such a sad news. He was flying this season for Southampton. There were talks about that at the end of next season, we're going to trigger our buyback clause and bring him back. And now he's going to miss eight to nine months of next season. Once again, God knows how he's going to come back once he is back. And it truly jeopardizes our, our situation of that buyback. But we'll see what happens for the time being. Speedy recovery, Tino Livermento. Um, we're not going to see him for the rest of this year. So it will be something around next year. Half the remainder of the season, we'll see how he plays. And then we'll assess whether our buyback is in cards or not. Breaking, Chelsea have told Dujon Sterling to get ready for preseason with Thomas Tuchel after receiving rave reviews from his time at Blackpool this season. A right-wing spot could be open in Chelsea's squad with Reese James playing RCB in recent weeks. Further goes on to say, Chelsea are set to finalise talks with three remaining bidders in London with hope for some indication on the win uh, winner this week. Chelsea hope to be able to start working on transfers in June, having lost key grounds on rivals already. All the rivals, as I've been saying, they've been talking to agents. They already got the homework going on. We we don't even have owners. So by the time June comes around, we should be executing deals, not talking, because the talks have been advanced already by the rival clubs. But it is what it is. Look, I've not watched Tujon Sterling and Blackpool. You guys let me know how he's been doing. Once again, I don't know, you know, 
if this will make Thomas Tuchel happy. Yeah, maybe as a backup option to John Sterling, because Aspie, I don't know if his legs, definitely his legs are giving up. He's on the decline. But once again, is Dujon Sterling an adequate backup? Do you know what I mean? Like, we would still need a top quality wing back. He may do a job here and there, but I don't want to go into the season thinking Dujon Sterling is going to be the starter for us because he had a great season with Blackpool. Do you know what I mean? Like, once again, let me know. Maybe, maybe, maybe he is having a stupendous season at Blackpool, which I don't know about, but I've not seen anything in social media about it. We 100% need a you know, borderline world-class right wing back and borderline world-class left wing back. But we'll see. We'll see what happens. Chelsea have sent scouts to follow Pau Torres. This is from Fabrizio Romano. We've been talking about Pau Torres since Rudiger's, um, you know, departure news have been given to us. And I've been saying it. Pau Torres is someone I'm very, very keen on. Villarreal in the semifinals. We're going to do a watch along. I know we didn't do a watch along today for uh, Man City versus Real Madrid, but we'll do a watch along for the Liverpool um, Villarreal game, and there will be a Pau Torres watch. I'm interested to see how Villarreal defend, especially Pau Torres against Liverpool's front three. Left footed player, young. Um, he's got all the attributes uh, to be a great, great defender. He's already a very good defender. It's, it's funny how the scouts, once again, you know, they, these are Chelsea scouts. I'm pretty sure they live in social media and they look at what Chelsea fans are talking about. How are you not already scouting Pau Torres from, from, from a long time ago? I mean, this guy didn't just turn into a good player now, good defender now. He's been a good defender for a little while, for at least the past two seasons. So how are you not scouting him already? It's mad. This is why I have no faith in... Um, our scouts one bit. Pau Torres is one of the players on Chelsea's list for the summer. Nathan G. Sing, 46 million to 50 million release clause active this summer. There you go. Look, we were talking about letting go of Rudiger. You're going to have to spend at least close to 50 million to replace him. So, you know, is it going to be cheap to, 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 to find a replacement? Hell no. But it is what it is. We're in a mess in, in regards to the sanctions. And Rudiger's got to do what he's got to do. Matija Kovacic and Callum hudson are getting close to a return to training. Nizar Kinsella, ladies and gentlemen, we need this midfielder back because without him, we have no other midfielder that's going to find those, you know, line-breaking passes, key passes through the middle. Yeah, we may not class him as an out-and-out -out playmaker, but he's the one who's looking for those riskier passes. He's the one who's looking for more you know, uh, passes in between the lines, which is so important. And he's dribbling, he's, you know, being being press resistant, his ability to, to build up from the back, the reading of the game is so important in midfield. Without him, we do lack that extra little bit of quality in midfield. And I hope he comes back very soon, especially for the FA Cup final. Uh, very important. Callum well, I don't know. I don't know whether he's going to feature much till the end of the season. He's now been out for a little while. Um, I hope he comes back. Obviously, he gives us another option, but it's been it's not been a good season for Kalamatanado. Let, let's be honest, and it's it's another topic that we need to talk about at the end of the season as to where we are in regards to Kalamatanado. That is, gentlemen, that's the latest with everything that's gone with Chelsea Football Club. Lots of things we've gone through. Let me know how you feel about about each and every one of these things. Um, you know, Pau Torres, we've talked about a few of the transfer stuff, you know, Thomas Tuchel's demands, you know, how much he needs to get back by the new owners, the new owner's situation, Lukaku, Timo Werner, Hakim Ziyech. I mean, lots and lots of conversation going on. Ladies and gentlemen, let me know how you feel about all of this in the comment section below. If you've enjoyed this, smash the like button. If you're here for the first time, subscribe. Hit the bell notification to stay in touch with all my content. Until next time, see ya.